the Lord. Jesus is alive. Can we thank my good friend Phil for leading with us this morning? God be praised for this glorious, glorious day. We sing to the only one worthy of our praise who conquered death, hell, and the grave. Let's sing this hymn to our God. He's so worthy. Sing. Benefits. 
who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. Let's sing, come on. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Who pulled me out of that pit? We sing, he did, he did. Who paid for all of our sin? Nobody but you. Proclaim it this morning. Who rescued me from that forever changed because of this truth. 2 Corinthians 5 says this, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them. Church, let's lift this up together. In Christ alone.
Yes, yeah, so I'll praise the one who paid our debt. Oh, praise the one who conquered death. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
exalt the Lord together. Amen. God be praised. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. What a way to start Easter morning. Can you thank our worship team this morning? Well, welcome to Easter worship here at First Woodstock. We're so thrilled that you're here. You look great this morning, don't you? Just look at your neighbor and tell him, you look great this morning. Just go ahead and tell him, you look great. Well, we're thrilled that you're here, all of you in the auditorium, all of you watching online. By the way, if you're watching online locally this morning, we have another service at 11 a.m. You got plenty of time. By my watch, an hour and 37 minutes to get up, get dressed, and join us right here in this auditorium. You don't want to miss what God's doing. By the way, if you're here for the first time, we're so thrilled that you'd spend a morning with us. Our team would love to say hello to you. All you need to do is text the word CONNECT to the number that you see on the screen. Somebody from our staff will reach out to you, say hello, answer any questions that you have. And oh, by the way, if you're also here for the first time, in the lobby in the Grand Foyer, we'd love to give you a gift. It's our gift from Woodstock to you. Consider it an Easter present this morning. You can pick that up after the service. Well, a great Easter verse this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. And Paul said, and if Christ has not been raised, he says, your faith is useless and you're still guilty in your sins. Aren't you grateful for Jesus this morning and forgiveness that comes from the cross and the resurrection? Well, for the next four Sundays here at Woodstock, we begin a sermon series titled, The Power of Forgiveness. I don't know, maybe you're struggling with forgiveness in your own life this morning. Maybe you're struggling with forgiving others, but the next four weeks, we've got an incredible series. Pastor Jeremy, our teaching pastor in residence, Pastor Vance Pittman, the president of Southern Seminary, Al Moeller, will be here with us during this sermon series. It's gonna be a great month, and you do not want to miss what God's gonna do right here in the month of April. Well, Easter Sunday is a great Sunday to be reminded of the gift that God gave us, isn't it? Just a great Sunday to be reminded. We say it every Sunday around here, we exist to help people find and follow Jesus from Woodstock all over the world. It's our desire that people literally in Woodstock, we've got friends from Japan in the auditorium this morning. We've got students who have left to go to Portugal, going to England, going to Los Angeles, going to Mexico, literally all over the world. This week, our students are gonna be out and fulfilling the mission that God has given us. And we're only able to do so because you're a generous church. So if you call First Woodstock home this morning, I wanna encourage you, would you just be generous in your giving, in your tithes and your offerings? By the way, if you're here for the first time, we don't want you to feel any obligation to give. But if you call First Woodstock home, we wanna ask you to give generously to the mission of God. Well, church, let's pray this morning. We've got a baptism. We're gonna sing some more. Pastor Jeremy's gonna preach. It's already been a great morning, hasn't it? Yes. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Luke chapter 24, verse 6. The angel said to Mary Magdalene, to Joanna, to Mary, he is not here. He is risen. Thank you, Jesus, this morning for the cross. Thank you for salvation. Jesus, I pray this morning we would count ourselves dead to sin and alive in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I'm grateful that today Jesus is alive and well, and he's still in the life-changing business. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's not resting, he is still reigning, and he is still changing lives. And this morning, we have come to be baptized Miss Sarah and Paro. And Sarah was saved at the age of nine playing volleyball when her coach asked her if she knew Jesus and she said no. And then she asked Jesus that day to step out of heaven and step into her heart. 
So Sarah, in obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in Him, it's a joy to baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Imagine the weight of a giant stone unsealed by angelic force, exposing an empty tomb. The lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus is risen from the dead. This is God's power on full display, revealed through his only son, who with pierced hands extends the offer of a new beginning to you and me. What is your new beginning? Is it freedom from the curse of addiction or forgiveness rising above the cloud of revenge? Maybe it's hope to overcome the cruelty of despair. No matter the path, every new beginning starts at the feet of a compassionate Savior who turns no one away. He is Jesus, the name above all names. He could not be kept in the grave. The Lamb of God is the light of the world, and He is mighty to save. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm thrilled you're here. As they make their way to join us in the crowd, can we thank our choir and orchestra for leading us this morning in worship? God bless you, choir and orchestra. Thanks for making it all about Jesus. Amen. Thanks for making it all about Jesus. Pastor Matt alluded to this a moment ago. We have some very special guests here. Many have traveled from far distances, but likely none further than our friends from Japan. Would you join me in welcoming a church from Japan that is shadowing us this Easter weekend? Yes, Pastor Yukimaso Otomo from the Shiogama Baptist Church in Japan. They're here with us this week, learning and growing, and we rejoice. There are 123 million people that call Japan home, and only 2% Christian. Wow. God bless this church as they minister and serve to those precious people in Japan. I know many of you have just sat comfortably so would you just pop up one more time, just one more time until the very end. We say this every Sunday at First Woodstock as we surrender our lives to the authority of Scripture. We love the Bible at First Woodstock, and we say this every week. Say it with me. Open my eyes that I might receive wonderful words from your law. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. I invite you to turn to the first book of the New Testament. The very first book of the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew. And today's text is Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. I want to talk to you today on this subject. One moment can change everything. One moment can change everything. Matthew 28, beginning in verse number one. This is what scripture says. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. There was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning. and His clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. The angel told the women, don't be afraid because I know you were looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, 
I have told you. So departing quickly from the tomb with fear and with great joy, they ran to tell his disciples this news. Just then, Jesus met them and said, greetings. They came up. They took hold of his feet. And they worshiped him. Then Jesus told them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, for they will see me there. Lord, we're so grateful for the privilege to gather on this special Sunday called Easter Resurrection Sunday. As we open the Bible, may you open our hearts through the Spirit. Speak as only you can. We're grateful for the thousands that will be here today. We're grateful for the thousands who are watching online, many traveling. Give us grace to listen well and even more grace to obey what you say. We love you, Jesus, our resurrected King. In Christ's name we pray this. Amen. Whether for good or bad, one moment can change everything. A single moment becomes impossible to forget, and you remember the moment for the rest of your days on earth. I'm not sure what's more ridiculous, the people that choose to go skydiving for their birthday or their friends who are invited that say, yes, I'll go with you skydiving for your birthday. One of our pastors, Wes Cantrell, when he turned 60 not long ago, he chose to go skydiving. And he asked several of us to go. And I can't believe I said yes. <laughs> I've never been more excited and terrified in my entire life. Fortunately for skydiving rookies, they pair you up. You go tandem. You get connected to a pro. In this training area, they start sizing you up. It's very informal for such a big jump. Well, you're about his height. Well, you guys probably weigh about the same. And I saw this guy that was really well put together. He came across as educated. Frankly, he looked like he knew what he was doing. Shane Hughley, one of our church members, gets paired up with this guy, and he says, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm a grad student at Georgia Tech. I'm majoring in aeronautical engineering, and I thought, I want to jump with that guy, but Shane got him. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. Seconds later, a 19-year-old young man comes stumbling over to me. He looked like he just rolled out of the bed. This is what he said. Hey man, it's you and me. I don't tell people, I'm not, I, this is the God's honest resurrection Sunday truth, I'm telling you the gospel. Hey man, I don't tell people my real name. You just call me Nashville. And I thought, this could be the day I go meet Jesus, thanks to Nashville. We go through the training, we get paired up, we get harnessed together. Shane's with the aeronautical engineer and I'm with Nashville. <laughs> Little plane that we'll jump from, taxis and goes up into the air. I'm trying not to cry, I'm trying not to vomit, I'm trying not to pass out. All these things. Shane and the grad student go lumbering out first. They pitch out head first. And Nashville looks at me and says, our turn. <laughs> and we did it. We free fell for approximately 45 seconds. It's an indescribable rush. Whatever you think it's going to feel like, it feels like even more. Nashville, the pro. 
he opens up that chute at just the right time. And I gotta be honest with you, once the chute opened, it became peaceful. We just glided down like birds. It was quiet. It was serene. If you can get through the jump and if you can get through the plunge, coming safely, gently down is a joy. <laughs> Nashville knew what he was doing. A moment that changed everything from plunging fear to sweet peace all in one second. Don't you love these good, wonderful moments that change everything? We're pregnant! I got the job! Dad, I got accepted into the school. We're moving close to you. We're moving back home. I made the team. I asked her. She said, yes, we're going to set a date. But you and I have lived long enough to know some moments are setbacks. Unforgettable moments for sure, but they're shocking how heartbreaking and painful they can be. Like my good friend Bruce, who's watching online today, who learned three weeks ago tomorrow that he has stage four pancreatic cancer. And as he described just hearing those words and wondering, was it a dream? Carrie and I had dinner this past week with a lady in our church that works for DFACS, and through tears, she described the domestic issues she was involved in where the father's in prison and the mother's addicted to drugs and the kids were really being the parents at the home, but it became unsafe, and law enforcement had to go with her to help pull the kids out of the home, and she said it was so painful as they screamed for their mother. That was their mother, but she wasn't well, and she said, I'll never forget that moment. I have a friend whose parents were divorced, and this is what he said. He said, I could take you to the room and to the chair where I first heard my parents say they would get divorced. Car accidents, fires, people we love who were doing so well, but they relapse, drugs and alcohol. Life on earth is fragile. And we are all shaped by unforgettable moments. So it was on that first Good Friday. The Gospels describe this caravan of women following the crowd that would see Jesus entombed. I love Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, two unlikely guys who became quiet but present followers of Jesus, and they said, we'll care for his body. They assisted those who took him from the cross. They buried Jesus. Matthew 27, 61 says this about the women. They sat and they watched as the tomb was sealed, as the rock is pushed in front of the tomb, sealing the entrance, this precious group of women, through tears, they see Jesus laying dead. Can you imagine their emotion, their thoughts in this moment? Their very real past connections to Jesus I think of his own mother, Mary. She'd loved him his entire life. Maybe she heard just hours before when Jesus from the cross shouted, John, your mother. 
Mother, your son. And he nodded to John. And the scripture says, from that day on, John took Mary, the mother of Jesus, into his house. Mary thinking about her future. Mary Magdalene was there. What a complicated woman. Mark 16, 9 and Luke 8, 2 says, she was possessed by seven demonic spirits. Imagine her grief. The one who cast the evil out of me, now staggered by the evil done to him. Another mother was there, the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. I wonder if her ignorance dawned on her with embarrassment as she sat at the tomb. You see, a couple of days before, she said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, let my two boys sit on your right and your left. Let James and John sit right beside you in your kingdom. And Jesus said this, dear woman, you don't even know what you're asking for. You can't imagine the cup I'm about to drink. So Jesus, beaten, bloodied, crucified, now buried, Darkness is covering the whole earth. Oh, but thank heaven. After that moment, another moment was on the way. This is how Matthew records the first moments of that resurrection morning. Number one, quickly I say this from verse one in Matthew 28, the timing of this unforgettable moment. Remember, this is after the Sabbath day, which is Saturday. The Jews are not allowed to work or be active. So they've been waiting, they've been sitting, they've been thinking, they've been processing. But listen to this, verse one, early on Sunday morning at dawn, the ladies go and view the tomb. The right day, Sunday. The right time, dawn. The right place, viewing the tomb. There's something wonderful about the freshness of the morning. Even if you're not a morning person, you agree, mornings mean new beginnings. What a difference one day can make. Lamentations 3.22, great is God's faithfulness. His mercy to us is new every morning. Never forget this, friends. As the sun rises each morning, God is on the throne, and with him, anything is possible. There are many people in this room and many watching online who have endured long nights of sorrow and darkness. Don't you get discouraged. Don't you let the devil rob you of your faith like he wanted to rob Jesus of the gospel. You go where Jesus is and you trust his timing. Jesus, right on time. Stan Toller says, He sailed him early, never late, but he's always right on time. Number two, the strength of this unforgettable moment. Notice we're told at least one angel is present for this glorious scene. The word literally means messenger on call. Angels. Remember how they sang the night he was born? Remember how they ministered to him after he fasted and prayed for 40 days in the desert? And now an angel descending at the time Jesus is raised. My parents are here on the front row. I was probably in third or fourth grade. There was an elementary musical at our church called Arch the Angel. And since my dad was one of the leaders, you better believe, guess who had to be Arch in Arch the Angel. And I'll never forget, I had one job. I had to get suited up like an angel and I had to do my arms like this and I had to sing during the play. I can zoom and I can hover when I'm working undercover and folks never know they've been assigned to me. They just know that things go smooth. I anticipate each move. For me, I'm doing what comes naturally. And the crowd went, Arch! 
arch, arch, arch the angel. <laughs> but I promise you, I wasn't like this angel. Notice the angel's power, the earthquakes. Notice the angel's precision, stone rolled away. Angel so powerful, the whole earth at his fingertips. Angel so precise, in a big cemetery, he knows which tomb to go to. Angel glory, the guards stun like dead men. Angel kindness, so friendly to the women. Don't be afraid. If I ever see an angel, I pray that's the first thing he says to me. Don't ever be afraid. Angel instructions, go and tell the men. Jesus has been raised. What well, beautiful foreshadowing. The angels descending, Jesus being raised. Some say this foreshadows the rest of us that will one day vacate the cemetery by faith in Jesus. The trump of God sounds. The angels ride on the clouds. We who exist snatched up to meet the Lord forever. This precise moment changed everything. Verses five and six. He's not here. He's not where the men laid him. He's risen. He's where God took him. Listen to this. Satan surely wants Jesus and the church dead. But if God wants us alive, Satan can do nothing about it. One of my favorite verses is Romans 16, 20. May the God of peace soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you until that day. Number three, the wonder of this unforgettable moment. This is highly personal. Lean in. Come and see for yourself. The text says, open your eyes. Don't take my word for it. Examine this for yourself. He's risen just as he said. But what's verse six say? Come and see where he was. One of the greatest experiences of my life was May 2019 when Carrie and I got to go to the garden tomb. Now, of course, we didn't expect to see a body. There were believers. We know Christ was raised, but it was so cool to just walk in here and say, he's not here. God will always do just as he said. Examine for yourself. What do you believe about Jesus? The one thing, thing for sure is there's no neutrality. And then next, the hope of this unforgettable moment. What did the angel say? Verse seven, he's risen. You go tell the disciples, Jesus will meet you in Galilee. You'll see him there. I love this. He's alive. You'll see him in Galilee. Believers, never fear your future. Run to your future. God's ahead of you. God's in your future. Sometimes we're so worried about tomorrow. This Easter morning reminds us God is in our future. Run to him with no fear. For believers, this is as bad as it will ever be. The earth, we got nothing but glory in front of us. We will surely see Jesus when we run to the place where he is. Number five, the mission of this moment. Notice the language, the urgency of this verse. Verse eight, spirit-filled visionary Christianity has a little pep in the step. And I know I hear it. I'm trying to not talk so fast or be so loud. Sometimes people say, he's great. You're, I, 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 I'm trying to be a reserved, good preacher. But listen to me. Christianity that's alive looks like this, quickly departing with fear and reverence and joy, running, telling the good news. True Christianity is alive, it's worshipful, it's joyful, it's talking it up. There's an awe in the wonder of what we believe. This is not a church that believes in cold, smug, dead, depressing, no motivation, quiet. Just, I mean, we believe in the awe of God and we believe in respecting him, but tell somebody it's glorious so that they'll won't in. There's a connection in this verse too, I love this. When we open our mouth to tell people about Jesus, he'll open others' eyes that they'll see Jesus. This is literally what's happening in verse eight. The angel says, I've showed you, now you go and tell others. And as you go and tell others, we'll show them. See this connection? 
And then last, the encounter of this unforgettable moment. As they were going, (laughs) Jesus meets them and says, greetings. I'm not sure if that's exactly how I said it, but I mean, I bet it wasn't greetings. I I just don't imagine that's Jesus. They fall at his feet. This is worship. Jesus is big and I'm small. And when he speaks and shows up, I worship. Walking on the road of obedience, doing what they were supposed to do, going to tell people, Jesus showed up. (laughs) Jesus can find any of us anywhere, but he especially shows up when we're walking on the road called obedience. You want a future God promises to bless? You want a future God promises to bless? Then go tell other people Jesus is alive. Watch him show up. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. That's not a rap. That's an old hymn. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. That's how my dad used to do it, impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives. He lives within my heart. In one moment, that first Sunday called Easter, resurrection morning, the women learned Jesus was alive and it changed them forever. Here's the big idea. The moment you and I personally learn that Jesus is alive, it will change everything forever. Maybe the timing's today. For some of us, I believe today's your day. God's calling you to be saved. Have you been saved? Say yes to him today. Others of us need strength. We're going through impossible situations like these women. Our God keeps his promises. Nothing's too difficult for him. Lean in and just embrace the mystery as people go, oh, you silly Christians. I mean, can you, do you really believe? Well, yeah, we, we actually, we believe in miracles. Jesus being raised from the dead means nothing's too hard for our God. Thomas said it like this. He said, I'm not gonna believe unless I see him. He wasn't there the first time Jesus showed up in the upper room. Second time he was there, Jesus showed up and he said, wow, now I believe. And Jesus said this, John 20, 29, one of my favorite scriptures. He said, Thomas, you believe because you saw. Blessed are those who believe even when they have it, Saul. Wow. You receive Jesus in a moment, but you enjoy his peace forever. Resurrection, one moment. But Christians walking close to Jesus for over 2,000 years. Easter means Jesus, the Son of God, was raised to crush evil. And for you, it means all your heart trusting fully in Jesus to save you and keep you forever. A couple of weeks ago, we went on staff retreat. Seven pastors from this church up to Blue Ridge where we'd rented a cabin. Now, we're educated pastors, sharp pastors. I mean, we lead a great church. And we got in that van and Winded our way through the Blue Ridge Mountains and Pastor Matt, our fearless leader, said, this is it, right here, 472. And we thought, the house is for sale. (laughs) But if you say, Pastor Matt, that's our VRBO, whatever, we okay, we unload, we get all our bags, we get on the porch, this is it, yeah, this is it. Another another guy, oh, I saw it in the pictures, this is it, yeah, we're at the right place. And we... Punch in the code they gave us, nothing happens. Well, I've, this is it. Try it. We've tried every door on that house. And finally, 
Someone said, let me go back and look at the instructions one more time. It's that house. <laughs> so we got all our bags and I'm, we had the right code. We were just at the wrong house. And no, how, no matter how many times we tried that code at that house, we weren't getting in. This is what Easter means. Right door, Jesus. <laughs> right password, your faith in him. A Jesus that's alive, faith that is personal is real. Personal and real. You're in. It's a moment that changes everything. Do you know him? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We're singing one more song and we'll be dismissed. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to pray with me as I invite people to receive Christ every week. God's speaking to your heart. Would you pray this with me? You know who you are. God's speaking to you. You're not sure if you're a believer. You're not sure if you've ever been saved. Pray this with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I want to turn from my sins. I put all my faith in Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was raised from the dead. Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. My friends, if you prayed that with me, would you come and let one of the encouragers at the altar know this morning or one of the encouragers out in the foyer? We do this every week, it's our last song we sing and while we sing, we give people a chance to respond to what God might be doing in their heart. Some people come and pray. Others come and speak to an encourager and say, hey, hey, could you help me know what I'm supposed to do next? Whatever it is, as God's speaking in your heart, you say yes. Speak Jesus as only you can. In Christ's name, amen. Would you stand with us as our team leads us? You sing our final song.
Isn't it been a joy to be in God's house this morning? Hey, hear me, if you made a decision for Jesus, if you prayed with me and made a decision for Jesus, or you need someone to speak with, or ask questions about church, or baptism, or, or you need prayer, I want you to see this on the screen. Yes, text next to this number. In fact, if you wanna take out your phone, just take a picture of it, a kind, real, helpful person that won't bother you and text you at odd times and wear you out, but a real person that respects you and wants to be helped. Helpful will respond to you if you text next to that number. We're so glad you're here. Would you say this with us as we prepare to close? Let's say this out loud and we're dismissing on Resurrection Sunday. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scripture. He also said to them, this is what is written. The Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead the third day and repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all nations begin